Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, Redemption's hill, where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything. morning everyone glad you found us online and hopefully you enjoyed that opening song as we get led indeed to the cross that should always be our focus if you would just take a moment and please hit that like uh, button that way we know that you are online out there watching us and let's get going with our forgiveness and confession song Make way through the waters, walk 
me through the fire Do what you are famous for What you are famous for Shut the mouths of lions Bring dry bones to life And do what you are famous for What you are famous for I believe in you gospel lesson today, we see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taking time for prayer. The gospels don't record often when Jesus goes to prayer, but when he does go to prayer, it's pretty obvious what he is going to prayer for. He's seeking the Father's direction based on what is going on in his life and the reactions that he is getting from people. Our prayer life is very similar in that way too. That oftentimes things in our world affect our lives. It is in those moments that we should be turning our hearts in prayer to our Heavenly Father. But unfortunately, too often, we don't turn to that. We turn to other things in this world. So let's just take a moment and reflect upon the times when we fail to prayer ask for God's forgiveness that we would be strengthened in prayer. We pause a moment to reflect. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for He indeed has had mercy upon us and has forgiven us our sins for Christ's sake. So in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable, all things are possible. In you, God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable, all things are possible. In you, make way through the waters, walk me through the fire. Do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life. And do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. I believe in you. I believe in you. There is no fear. I believe there is no doubt cause I have seen your faithfulness my fortress over and over the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark the first chapter glory to you O Lord immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. 
That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues, and casting out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey kids, it's Deaconess Kim with a special message for you today. Have you ever tried to watch TV or play a game or read a book or do something when there was a lot of distracting noise around? Maybe there were people talking or dogs barking or machines making loud noise. Is it easy to pay attention to what you're doing when there's a lot of other noise? No, in fact, it can be really, really hard. You might miss something important in the TV show or find that you make a mistake in your game or realize that you don't remember what happened in the story you were reading. The same thing can happen to us when we try to spend time with God, and Jesus understood that. So many people followed Jesus all over, wanting him to heal them or teach them, and Jesus did those things. But Jesus also knew that it was important to spend time with God away from all the things that could distract him. So the Bible tells us that Jesus would get up early and go away to a quiet place. Then he could spend time with God, praying and listening to God. After his quiet time, Jesus would go back to the people or move on to the next town. He had a lot to do, but Jesus always took time to pray and spend time alone with God. And we can learn from Jesus. It's important for us to spend time with God, just like Jesus did. And it's good to find a quiet place where we won't be distracted for our quiet time. Maybe we do it in the morning like Jesus did. Or maybe we do it right before bedtime or at another time. But remember, the devil doesn't want us to do that. The devil will try to distract us, tell us it doesn't matter or that we don't have time. The devil knows that when we spend time with God, our faith gets stronger. So he will try to distract us or make us forget. God loves us so much, even when we forget to spend time with him. But when we spend quiet time with God, he helps us grow and learn more about him. So it's a really good thing for us to do. Will you pray with me? Dear God, there are so many things that distract me from you. Help me remember to spend some time with you each day. Thank you for Jesus, who loves me so much. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we're going to take a little look at prayer. Prayer is certainly something that is part of most of our daily lives. Prayer is indeed something that the Bible speaks about uh, a lot. In fact, we have a prayer book in the Bible. It's called the Book of Psalms. It's God's prayer book for you and for me. A great place anytime to spend some time in God's Word and in prayer is in those Psalms. Now I think for most of us, our first memories of prayer probably have to do with food prayers. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. That's a prayer I remember growing up. And for those with the Catholic background, well, you probably know that prayer pretty well. For Lutherans, though, it's this one, right? Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. I know there is a little controversy on this one, right? Is it these gifts, or thy gifts, or these thy gifts, which I hear some people pray too? And then the returning thanks at the end of a meal. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. 
I found this particular slide specifically because it had because. It's the King James Version translation of that beautiful section of Psalms. Often used, uh, maybe a little different in each family too. Because, and, you name it, for. Anyway, these are many of those prayers that we learned from, well, since we were quite little. Or how about bedtime prayers? Perhaps that's another one that we remember. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray thee, Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray thee, Lord, my soul to take. And this I ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. This was the prayer that we used in our family. Again, some have a slight variation of that, but very common. These are the ways we learn about prayers. With our kids, we would pray this prayer, and then we would oftentimes name names of our family, go through our names and names of close immediate family and, and the rest of our relatives. And we would include pastors and their families and teachers and their families and missionaries and their families too. Obviously, these prayers set a pattern. They set a foundation, a foundation for us in a prayer life. Prayer suggests that we are reliant upon God. And when we have this faith formation, it emphasizes that for sure. It's important for the life of an individual to, to be in prayer. In our blessings, of course, we give thanks to God for the many blessings that he gives to us in this life. When we contemplate all the things that we have, whether it's a cars or homes or houses or a beautiful sanctuary to worship in or the ability to even walk online. You see, if prayer is our foundation, we remember that these indeed are gifts from our God. And also when we face life's challenges, <clears throat> we are reminded to rely upon God, to turn to God for his help, to ask God to to heal or to be with us during difficult times in our life. Our prayer life reminds us that we are in partnership with God, that we are not going it alone. And this always brings us closer to Jesus. Also, it's important for the life of the church. I'll remind you that if you want, ever want to submit a prayer to the, to the church to be put on the prayer line, it's real simple. It's pray at teamjesusliberty.org. You'll know that your prayer request was received because you'll get a notification saying, hey, we received a prayer from you. And that gets put out to our prayer warrior team, right? And if you'd like to get added to that, you can just email that same thing, pray at teamjesusliberty.org, and we will get you added on to the prayer line. The more people we have praying, well, of course, that's the better. Though through prayer, we, we support and encourage one another. And we are also reminded of one another, the needs and the challenges uh, that each of us face, even in the midst of this pandemic. And I would even say probably even more so during this pandemic, that we rely upon prayer to keep each other close, to keep ourselves connected. When we pray at church, we also pray for our community. And that's a good reminder to us, too, that, that our world is bigger than just us that's here. And that God has placed us in this community to, to be his hands and his feet in our community, too. That's why we offer prayers on Sunday morning for, for those governments, for those in authority, for those that take care of us. In prayer, we are reminded that we are part of a bigger community, too. And let's not forget that even in worship, the responsive prayer that we prayed this morning comes right out of our psalm, God's prayer, prayer book, right? And when we pray those psalms, when we respond them back and forth, and, and when we pray them in church, well, honestly, we're connected. We're connected with Christians throughout the generations that have prayed those same prayers too. It's the community of believers that share this wonderful book, the Psalms, because it's prayer that connects us to one another. Jesus prays in our gospel today.
today, and rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. I guess a lot could be said about Jesus praying. Mark only mentions prayer three times that Jesus prayed, that is, here, after he fed the 5,000, and also at the Garden of Gethsemane. But it is implied, of course, that Jesus prayed more than just these three times. As we learn from Scripture, it is almost certain that Jesus' parents taught Jesus to pray too. They probably had food prayers and bedtime prayers. They absolutely went to church, to the synagogue, the local one there in Nazareth, every Saturday on the Sabbath day, right? To offer prayer and praise to God. And remember, they made that annual trip to Jerusalem where they would remember the Passover. And that Passover, I am sure, was surrounded by lots of prayer, remembering those great stories of old and giving praise and thanks to God. As many of us, as many of us that were formed into prayer, followed, probably followed the same pattern that Jesus did too. So it's safe to say that Jesus was often in prayer. So is there anything different that we can take from Jesus' prayer life, at least that is recorded in the Gospel of Mark? Maybe. Honestly, I've always been intrigued by Jesus praying. I mean, how does that work with the Trinity anyway? Is it just meant as an example for us? Perhaps it is, but I bet it's probably a lot deeper than that too. When we are, see this time when Jesus turns to prayer, we see that Jesus gets up early or perhaps in the middle of the night. We know that it is still dark. It's a little different. It's not a meal prayer. It's certainly not a bedtime prayer. It's not a morning prayer and it's not even an evening prayer. You see, Jesus has intentional prayer. It's interesting how the story unfolds too, because Jesus does go away, and he prays, and he stays away. We're, Mark tells us that St. That Peter has to actually go out and find Jesus to see where he is. And when Peter finds him, he's like, where have you been? Everybody is looking for you. You see, Peter must have had a good relationship with his mother-in-law. Remember, St. Peter heals her. And, well, apparently he's happy about this. But not only that, right? But he's also very happy about what is taking place. People are coming by the hundreds bringing their sick to Jesus, and Jesus is healing them. They got a pretty good thing going right there at Peter's own house. It seems like the text almost has a little bit of conflict going on, right? Peter wanting Jesus to come back. We can do this day after day after day. People are coming and coming and coming. But see, when Jesus goes off to pray, there's a change in plan. And Jesus simply tells Peter, hey, we need to, to move on. You see, something's different about this prayer. You see, there's something going on with Jesus and the Heavenly Father that has changed what Jesus is doing. Because Jesus is now going off to another place. We see the same thing in the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus' prayer again is different. We remember this story. Jesus is teaching, and it gets late into the night or to the evening. And so he tells them that they need to go find some place for food. Well, the interaction between the disciples, and of course Jesus knows the plan because they take the five loaves and the two fish, and they feed 5,000 people. But you see again, from the disciples' perspective, this is not a bad ministry, right? People indeed are coming to them. But after Jesus feeds the 5,000, we are told once again that he goes off into a desolate place to pray. He's praying to his heavenly Father. Is this the plan? 
and the story unfolds, we, we, we're told that the disciples are sailing away in the, in the boat to get away from the people. Jesus does the same. And in fact, ends up coming to them on the water. The disciples were afraid because, well, because of the wind and the waves. And Jesus joins them on the boat. And they're going off to sail into a different place. A different place to, again, bring the good news of Jesus to another place. See, again, Jesus was questioning the Father about what was the next moves, what was the next steps in his plan. See, we experience this too in prayer. And it usually comes when we hit the crossroads, right? Because those prayers become much different than our food prayers or or our bedtime prayers. They're very different even from prayers for our loved ones that are maybe facing ailment or difficulty. It's a prayer that we make when we're evaluating our current situation in life. Sometimes that's forced upon us, right? We, we lose a job or, or we lose a loved one or something changes in our life that's drastic. And so at times we turn to our Heavenly Father and say, okay, what is maybe next? But see, these are very reflective prayers because they're prayers in which we are leaning upon God or at least we should be leaning upon God for what is the direction that we should be taking in our life. And sometimes it looks quite different in life. In the Acts, we have this story between St. Peter and a man named Cornelius. Again, and it starts in prayer. It's interesting because the church is having to move away from Jerusalem, probably because of the persecution that's taking place. And we are told that, that Peter is in another place, Joppa. So Peter, he goes on to the housetop to pray. And when he goes to pray, he sees a vision. And in this vision, he is hungry. And as he is hungry, he is told to rise and to kill and to eat. But on this vision that he's seeing are nothing but unclean animals. And St. Peter says, I've never had anything unclean ever touch my lips. And the voice that comes and responds that says, what I call clean, don't call unclean. And immediately following this vision, there is word that Peter to go to Cornelius, to meet Cornelius, a Gentile that had been praying. And in this story, we also see that an angel comes to Cornelius, telling him to go and seek out Peter, to bring him back. And you see, this really changed the whole dynamic of ministry from that point forward. You see, Peter's ministry was no longer just to the Jews, but it was also to the Gentiles too. In Mark's Gospel, the last place that he records Jesus praying is in the Garden of Gethsemane. We remember that this prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane is right before he is going to go to die on a cross for you and for me. We are told that he is in deep anguish with this prayer. That he is praying fervently to his Father in heaven. If there's any other way, if there's any other way, but your will be done. And of course, we know that the Father's will is indeed done. And Jesus willingly goes to die on a cross for you and for me. Because this is God's plan. Not only for you and for me, but it's God's plan for His church. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. We know this gospel in a nutshell. And this gospel of God's love and forgiveness is given to His church through the power of the Holy Spirit. And see, this is the Father's will that His love be known through you and through me. You see, when we're wrestling with prayer, that foundation that we have in prayer has already been set. We know that all of life's blessings are coming as gifts from our Heavenly Father. 
And we know that in times of our trouble, we can always turn to Him to seek His guidance, to seek His instruction. But even more importantly, individually and as God's church, we should always be wrestling with the same. Is what am I doing in this life? Is this for God's glory? Or is it for my own? You see, that's when the crossroads hit. That's where the rubber hits the road. Team Jesus, what a great gift prayer indeed is. And see, this is why I want to emphasize once more in our discipleship journey that that we have a list of people that we are praying for, that we want to have a closer relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that we are diligent and intentional on those prayers, whether it's at 10.02 or, or some other time that you have chosen. But see, this is crucial, this prayer. Because we see in prayer that God can change people. He's changed us. And He can change those names on our list too. So as we move forward in thinking of prayer, let's not forget that we, God's church, are continuing to do that which Jesus did to. That is to to seek and to save the lost and to bring God's love in this place. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you, the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue His kingdom work among us. Our announcements for today include our Shine event, where we're going to partner with the Missouri District uh, doing a servant event. So very much like our work day, but we will do a project on Saturday, April 17th. More information is in our Team Jesus News about that, but we could certainly use your help. Also, collecting for our Back Snack program, uh, more information about what to bring for our t- in our Team Jesus News. Uh, donations will be accepted until January 24th. And then last but not least, a reminder, the Martin Luther Academy auction is already on the way, so make sure that you're getting signed up and how you can participate in that, even if you are safely isolating at home. They have a way that you can actually buy dinner and support Martin Luther Academy. All you do is pre-order that food, information on the Team Jesus News, or you can check out their website too. Light of the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant like the stars in the wintering sky joy of the father reach through the darkness shine across the earth send the shadows to fly light of the Came one 
God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have given us prayer where we can talk to you one-on-one -on -one and know indeed that you hear us for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. So Lord, we continue to pray that you would be in our lives each and every day, that you would use us to shine your light in this broken world, that you would strengthen us to live our life so that your love is reflected in all that we say and in all that we do. Lord, we ask this for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Light of the world soon will be coming with fire in his eyes. He will ransom his own through clouds he will lead us straight into glory and there he shall reign forevermore sing hallelujah sing hallelujah sing hallelujah for the things he has done come and adore him bow down Sing hallelujah to the light of the world. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath in our Shout your 
praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out Pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath. 